In this tutorial, I'm going to walk you through a practical example of how the custom rotation center feature can be used to help you as you design. And we'll put together a design based on an interlaced Celtic knot. But more details about the feature can be found in our other tutorials. Before I get stuck into the design, first I'm going to switch on snapping using this icon on the toolbar. And also ensure the snap to shape key points and snap to object geometry are selected. Now using the ellipse tool and holding down the shift key, I'm going to create a circle which fills the page. And then on the context toolbar, I'm going to switch on the option show rotation center. And as you can see, the rotation center appears in the middle of our circle. I'll set the fill to 100% black and the stroke to none. This will act as my background, so I'll name the layer background. I'll duplicate the circle using command J. And then on the transform tab, I'll set the transform position of the selection's center. I'll ensure the object maintains its current aspect ratio by clicking this icon and then reduce the width by 5% by typing an expression minus equals 5% and pressing enter which sets the width to 95 millimeters. I'm going to switch the fill and stroke settings for this smaller circle and then set the stroke color to white. Then I'll set the stroke to a width of five points. To help me create the Celtic knot accurately, I'm going to use smaller circles clipped inside this current circle. So I'll call this layer border. So I'm going to duplicate the selected border circle. Because I didn't deselect the layer at any point, Affinity Designer automatically transforms the new duplicate by 5%, the same amount as before. I'll name this layer Knot. I want to position this Knot layer accurately over my border layer. I need it to intersect two of three points which sit equidistant around the circumference of the border circle. To do this, I'm going to select the border layer and temporarily convert it to a pie using this option on the context toolbar. I'm then going to drag this node to here. So my border now shows a perfect third of a pie shape. We can confirm this by looking at the total angle on the context toolbar, which shows 120 degrees. I'll switch to the move tool using V and then select the knot layer. I'll reposition the top center of the circle so it snaps to this point on the pie. Now I need to rotate my knot layer so it lines up with this point. I can do that by moving the rotation center of the layer to here and then rotating it. Using the shift key to constrain the shape to a circle I can then resize the knot layer until it snaps to this point on the pie. This is all possible because of the snapping options set here. With the knot layer accurately placed, I can now reset the border layer to a circle. I can do this by selecting the layer and then on the context toolbar, click close pie. The next stage is to replicate the knot circle so our design actually looks like a knot. Now I'm going to reposition the rotation center to the middle of the border layer. However, I'm not going to rotate this layer. Instead, I'm going to duplicate the layer using Command J and then rotate this duplicate using Shift to constrain the angle until the duplicate crosses over at this point. If I use Command J again, another duplicate is created 
with an additional rotation applied. And I think you can now see the Celtic knot coming together. To hide the parts of the knot layers, which extend beyond the border layer, I can simply select the knot layers and drag them inside the border layer, like so. To create the interlaced effect, I need to create a shadow effect at these three points to simulate the strands overlapping. To do this, expand the border layer and select the top two knot layers and duplicate them. Select the two originals, which now sit underneath the duplicates, holding down Command as you select them, and set their stroke width to 10 points, and the stroke's colour to black. This works well, but results in a nasty overlap at the three points. To remove this overlap, we need to cut up our knot shadow layers. So with both layers still selected, switch to the Node tool using the A key and then on the context toolbar, click Convert to Curves. Select the top knot shadow layer and add a node along this stretch of the curve around here by clicking once. Then on the context toolbar, select Break Curve. Add another node along this stretch of the curve around here. Then select Break Curve again. You'll notice our circle has now been split into two curves, as you can see on the Layers panel. Select this layer and then click Remove Layer. Repeat this process for this layer. Now you might want to leave the design as it is, but I'm going to take it further so I can use the Rotation Center feature further. I'm going to select all the objects on the page using Command A and then reduce the size by half using the expression divide equals 2 in the transform panel. I'm then going to enlarge the background layer by 10% using the expression times equals 1.1. Next I will duplicate this shadow knot layer and move it right to the bottom of my document by dragging it in the layers panel. I'm going to spin this curve outwards to make it look like a spike extending from our knot design. So I'll switch to the Move tool and reposition the rotation point at the center of this circle and then rotate it. Then to make it look like a spike, I'm going to add a customized pressure to it using the Stroke panel, like so. Now to finish the design, I want to repeat this two more times around the edge. So with the spike selected, I'll reposition the rotation point to the centre of the whole design, duplicate it, rotate it, and then duplicate it again. And there's our finished design. So that's just one way in which you can use the custom rotation centre feature in Affinity Designer. Thanks for watching.